Hello and welcome to worship. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of the season of Lent. It also happens to be a day of a snowstorm. So even if we can't get together in person, uh, it's great to worship with you in this way today. Today as we begin this uh, season of Lent on Ash Wednesday, uh, as we follow Jesus on this journey to the cross, it reminds us of the great hope ultimately that we have in our Lord who loves us, who died for us, and again, who, who will later celebrate on Easter, was raised from the dead. Today, as the name Ash Wednesday suggests, the time was Christians put ashes on their forehead during this worship service. And at the heart of it, that practice reminds us that we are a people who need a Savior and that we have a Savior. Uh, today, um, Pastor Ben will lead us through that time of uh, the imposition of ashes, but want to let you know that as we gather in person on Sunday, there'll be an opportunity to receive the ashes then. There's a couple things we're reminded of as we have ashes imposed. Um, first of all, is of our own brokenness. And we're reminded that we fall short in our relationships with each other and our relationship with God. We're reminded of our need for forgiveness and our need to be renewed and to be restored, and our Lord can do that. We join in those uh, stories from uh, the scriptures of people as showing repentance would wear, uh, put on sackcloth and ashes. The ashes also remind us of our own mortality, that we don't live here on earth forever. And we'll hear those words that sometimes we hear at the graveside, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. As we journey into Lent together, may you also have hope. And those ashes today are put on the, the sign of the cross, or in the shape of a cross on our foreheads. And we're reminded ultimately that sin and death don't have the last word. But our Lord who loves you has the power to bring us resurrection and renewal. Today, when we do the uh, uh, imposition of ashes, I uh, said Pastor Ben will lead us through that. And at home, you can sure use some oil or some water um, or just use your finger to trace the sign of the cross. I want to also share that today we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And as we do that, maybe ahead of time you want to have some wine and some uh, bread ready or some juice and some crackers as we prepare to share in communion today. As we enter into the season of Lent, we are reminded, as Pastor Kevin mentioned, that we are a broken people, that we are dust, and we need a God and need a Savior. It's also a season where we highlight our own need to repent, to turn back to God in our dustiness and our humanness, and to receive God's forgiveness again. We'll walk through an order for confession and forgiveness. I'll lead us through this. Each of the petitions here end with, Have mercy on us, Lord. We begin our confession this way. Most holy and merciful God, we, we confess, confess to you and to, and to one another and to the, the whole communion of saints in heaven, heaven and, and on earth, earth that, that we, we have, have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by what, what we have done, and by, by what, what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. We confess before you, Lord, all of our past unfaithfulness. 
the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, Lord. We confess our self-indulgent appetites, our self-centered ways, and our exploitation of other people. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord. We confess our anger at our own frustrations and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord. Lord. We confess our misplaced love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord. Lord. We confess our negligence in prayer and worship and a failure to commend the faith that is in us. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord. Lord. In this moment of quiet, Lord, hear our confession and move our hearts to repentance. We pause now for a moment for quiet reflection, confession, and repentance. People of God, hear the promise of God from Ezekiel chapter 36. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you will be clean. From all of your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes. The promises of God are true. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and freed to love God and God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our Ash Wednesday Gospel comes from Matthew, chapter 6. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Grace and peace to you, siblings in Christ, from Jesus, who is our greatest treasure. Amen. In that gospel passage I just read, Jesus tells the crowd gathered around him that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if we'd been able to gather here in the building today, I would have invited uh, the kids and anybody else who wanted to, to do a little uh, hunt, to look around for some hidden gems. They would have looked something like this. 
Uh, we would have gathered them up and then brought them uh, to my treasure chest up here, placed them in there, and talked about all of the treasure that God gives us. Some of that is what we usually think of when we hear the word treasure. Maybe you have actual jewels uh, in your possession or money or special items, things that have a lot of value. A lot of the treasure that God gives us, though, is not money. It's the people who love us, the skills and the talents that are unique to us, the time and the energy we have, the homes, the food, the clothing that are ours. If we started on a list of everything that God gives us, all of those treasures, that list would go on for a very long time. As you heard, today is the first day in the season of Lent, and one of the purposes of Lent is to spend some time thinking about what we value and how that shapes our lives. Jesus calls his followers to store up for themselves treasures not on earth but in heaven and reminds them that their hearts will follow their treasure. And Lent gives us the chance to pause and to ask what does Jesus mean by treasure? What are the treasures that we are storing up? And what does that have to do with our hearts? About a year and a half ago now, Ben and I accepted your call to serve as your pastors of intergenerational ministries and prepared to move from our home in South Dakota here to Farmington. It was something less than the ideal time to be looking for a house to buy. It was even less ideal to be living five hours away from where we were looking. Our amazing realtor, Eric, met our wonderful family members at all kinds of houses so that we could get video tours on cell phones. We put in an offer, we'd wait for a few days, we'd find out that the offer wasn't accepted, and then we'd start again over and over again, it felt like. At some point, we began discussing living in a camper in the church parking lot, and I wasn't really sure how much we were joking and how much we were serious about that. When the house that we ended up buying showed up on the market, I did not like it for a number of reasons. But the neighborhood was good, the location was good, the price was within our range, so we put in another offer. Doesn't really matter, I said to Ben, we're not going to have this one accepted either. So when Eric called to say that our offer had been accepted, I was equal parts surprised and relieved and more than a little apprehensive. We just bought our first house and I didn't like it. Over the next month, while we waited for the closing and the moving days, I tried hard to get excited about the house. I was so grateful to have any place at all to live, and I hated admitting that I felt disappointed, even to myself. But the truth was I was keenly aware of the boxes that the house had not checked, the limitations and the challenges it held. After we paid the down payment and signed all of those papers and got to the other side of moving day, something started to happen. As I unpacked box after box and slowly filled the house with cherished belongings, as my children filled the house with their laughter and play, as Ben and I put more time and money and effort into house and yard projects, my feelings about the house began to change. I found myself relieved and then glad to get back to it at the end of the day started thinking about it more as our home and not our house. I smiled as I talked through potential plans with family and friends. Before too long, I realized I liked our house a lot. And it wasn't because we'd made any big changes to it. We hadn't. It was because we literally put our treasure into it. And it didn't take my heart very long to follow. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. 
One way to think about what Jesus means by this is to ask ourselves some questions. To start with, what is the treasure in our lives? What matters most to us? And is there perhaps more to be treasured than we've noticed? All year long at Farmington Lutheran, we are living into the theme of immeasurably more. Exploring all of the ways that our God does and our God gives immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. A good exercise for the season of Lent would be to expand your awareness of how much God provides for you. Just how rich your treasure trove is. Start a list of things God gives me and add at least one thing every day. Or take a picture every day for the 40 days of Lent of something you treasure. Do a social media post every Sunday, giving thanks for the treasures God's given you that you noticed in the last week. Once we're aware of what our treasures are, we can ask, do the things that I value bring me closer to the kingdom of God? Do the ways that I spend my time and my money and talent and energy, do they draw me deeper into relationship with God and with God's people? Or are they doing the opposite? Are my investments, in every sense of that word, pulling me away from God and my neighbors, putting up walls or interfering with my ability to follow Jesus? And if that's the case, what can I do about it? These are hard questions to ask and to answer. It takes courage and wisdom to be honest about this stuff, which is why we do it together in a community. Throughout Lent, we're thinking about how we are fed and sent. We'll consider the ways that God feeds us, provides for us, and what we're called to do about that how we're called to share what we've been given. The season of Lent, like the journey of faith, is not meant to be easy. We start Lent with this Ash Wednesday worship, when we use ashes to mark crosses on our foreheads. And thanks to the snow, the ashes are coming this next Sunday. We mark those crosses and we remember that we are dust. And all of this clearly, even painfully, calls out the brokenness in our world, in our lives, in our hearts. We are admitting that a lot is wrong. We hoard treasure, or we distribute it unfairly. We value the wrong things. We use the treasure that we've been given to build walls instead of bridges, or we allow it to distract us from God rather than draw us back to God. The cross on our foreheads reminds us of this brokenness, of all of the death-dealing forces in the world. But the cross is also the ultimate symbol of the power of God's love to set things right. The cross reminds us that God doesn't just give us treasure. God treasures us. Just like we put our treasures, our time and talent and money and energy into our homes, our loved ones, our jobs, our hobbies, God puts God's treasure, God's time and talent and energy into us. God loves you and me, and the whole world so fiercely that God dies on a cross and rises again to make sure that life wins and that nothing can ever stand in the way of God's saving, redeeming love for all creation. That cross on your forehead tells you that God treasures you, and where God's treasure is, there God's heart is also. God holds you in God's heart. From the moment that God breathes life into you until the moment you enter into life everlasting and every moment in between. There is no greater treasure than that promise. May it settle into your heart and bring you peace 
and courage for this Lenten season and beyond. Amen. We're not gathered together in person to put ashes on your forehead and our foreheads. And so this is the time, as Pastor Kevin mentioned at the beginning, that if you've got some water, some oil, maybe even some dirt or something like that, that you would like to take and mark on your forehead, uh, this is the time to go get those things. It's not always a pleasant reminder, probably isn't supposed to be a pleasant reminder, to be reminded that you're dust and to dust you shall return. But it's a thing that we do in Lent. We're reminded, we remind ourselves intentionally that all of our earthly treasures, and ourselves even, our very bodies, are dust and will return to dust. But we also, as Pastor Kristen said, heard, we heard that God treasures dust and treasures us deeply. And so God's heart is with us, and God does amazing things with dust. And so, either with your own finger, uh, with water, oil, dirt, something else around you, um, I invite you to take, a, take the moment now to mark the sign of the cross on your head. And as you do that, uh, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. People of God, as we were reminded how God indeed uh, treasures us, uh, our offering time is a time to respond back to God with thanks and uh, time to give our offering that also uh, is what fuels our mission and ministry. And I think back to early pandemic times, um, how you responded and gave online and through automated giving. And today's another one of those days maybe we're not gathering in person. And so thank you for your intentionality uh, and your offerings with you. you. Go through the link today to give online, uh, to set up automated giving, whatever it may be. I think of whether it's worship services that we are able to do through the live stream or in person, uh, our faith formation like the Lent, uh, also the Lenten mentor program, all those different ministries that happen in these walls and out in the community uh, happen because of your offering. And so I uh, thank you for taking a moment uh, now to reflect on how uh, you want to offer to give God your thanks and to further this mission and ministry. Thank you. This Lenten journey will bring us to the day of uh, Monday, Thursday. And reminded of the events that night and also invited, reminded of our theme to be fed and sent. And one of the ways that we're fed is, is Jesus gathers us to the communion table and we are loved and forgiven. Uh, we receive the body and blood of Christ and then we're sent out uh, to join in God's work in the world. And so uh, let's join together now in Holy Communion. So I invite you to go ahead and to have that bread and wine or uh, crackers and juice uh, near you. And we're reminded in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink. Saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
I invite you to, uh, to take that bread or that cracker and hear this promise, that this is the body of Christ given for you. And I invite you to take the wine or the juice and receive it with this promise, that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For those who maybe aren't receiving uh, the bread and the wine today, um, or maybe as you are, receive this blessing also. Hear this blessing that Jesus loves you and goes with you today and always. Amen. As you receive uh, that blessing, receive this communion blessing today as well. That may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. We close each uh, worship service with a benediction, that good word for your journey. And so I invite you to receive uh, this benediction tonight. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are sent out to join in God's work in the world, may you go with this dismissal. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.